We went from 60 degrees and sunny to below freezing and snow squalls. The wind is really making things fun today. Leon is in a mood. Leon! And the mini truck is about to get overhauled. Somebody's about to have a souped up truck. With our first stone wall completed, we button up the last door to the deck and get ready to tackle the next section of stone on the foundation. Not what I had in mind for spring. No, the t-shirt days came and gone. <laughs> Already? Yes. T-shirt days came early though, that's why. The Carhartt days came back. Yes, it did, just cute too. <laughs> so I got a little bit of work to do before I can box in the solvents up there. You guys can see them. They're wide open. Our plan was to be outside just getting stain done and getting all the everything done with stain, but it's way too cold. I think it's like 29 degrees. So we uh changed it up and now we're doing this. seen a ball before. <laughs> They're like, what is this thing? <laughs> He's so curious, but he moves, he gets scared. It's okay, Dex, it doesn't bite. Now that Josh has the boards torched, we can work on just brushing them off and getting our measurements and start getting them installed up on the porch. About four and a half. Maybe four and five eighths. It's, it's a little, it's a little, it deviates just a little bit. Um, so we get cut it flush, or do you, you want to do like a little one inch, like I guess, uh, lip on it. What do you think? I'm okay with a little lip. I think with it being so dark mm -hmm. that you're not really going to see it. You're probably right. So let's do a lip real quick. If we don't like it, we'll pull it down. We'll run through the saw one more time and put it up. Okay. Won't be a big deal if we like it or not. So. Sounds good. Look at those tires. I Somebody's know. about to have a souped up truck. Oh, Oops, yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> I'm putting these on here. I'm laying on the suspension to get here first and put the suspension on. And it's gonna lift up like two and a half inches plus the size of the tires. It's probably gonna be about four inches higher, four and a half inches higher total. So nice. be pretty cool. Yeah. This is gonna be Pimp My Ride 12 year old edition. Yeah. And then I'm gonna have intake for it. So when you're hitting that gas, it's like you have some under the, under the seat, except you got a three cylinder. <laughs> <laughs> it's all you got some. Things fun today. Yes, it, is. it makes it, it makes a big difference though. It really does look so much better. Thank you. Oh yeah. Wait till you get down here and you see it. It's amazing how little things like that, like it finishes something. Like, it's just a board, but it really adds a finishing touch. Yeah, it does look great. Hey, two little nail pops. You know, it's a little low. It's fixable though. I can't even see it. It's on the other side. No. Nah, you probably can't see it from the other side either. I definitely can. I'm gonna Shh, I won't tell anybody. <laughs> Everybody knows now. <that. laughs> 
I have a husband, three kids, and several dogs and cats. And that right there, guys, is why I also have the Narwhal T10 2-in-1 Robot Mop and Vacuum with Automatic Mop Cleaning Station. This 2-in-1 robot liberates me from doing the mop washing and offers a hands-free floor cleaning experience, which means I get more time for self-care because the Narwhal T10 is cleaning up after the kids and pets instead of me. The strong suction power and side brushes instead of roller brushes reduce hair entanglement and pick up the trails of crumbs that seem to follow kids everywhere. Two rounded triangle mops rotate three times per second. That's 180 revolutions per minute with 10 N pressure for deep cleaning and no stains left behind. The robot can auto detect mop sturdiness, returns to the station to self clean and resumes where it left off. In addition, the mop dries automatically to prevent germs from growing. Equipped with a clean and wastewater tank, the full tank of five liters can cover a space up to 3,000 square feet. LiDAR navigation system will map your home intelligently and quickly. The Narwhal T10 goes over thresholds or rugs easily and the cliff sensors help the robot sense the edges and avoid the robot from falling off. With multiple smart sensors, the robot avoids obstacles and tackles rough surfaces effortlessly. When it knocks into something, the bumpers are tracked and the sensors direct the robot to a different route. With one click, you can make the robot vacuum, mop, build a map, and return home. Set virtual no-go zones, choose multiple scenarios and cleaning plans, get timely updates for new firmware, receive automatic upgrades to algorithms, adjust vacuuming suction level and mopping moisture level, and more. Click the link below to check out the Narwhal T10. Now let's get back to the build. <laughs> Hurricanes are coming, dude. I can't with the wind. Jeez. Yeah, it's a crazy wind. Oof, yeah. That's good, girl. The city streets, ocean air, and mountain peaks, they are not the finest in the land. One more side, we're done. Much more than these I have seen firsthand. There ain't nothing. There ain't nothing, there ain't nothing like coming home to you. And no matter where I go, and no matter what I do, there ain't nothing like coming home to you. So much better. Definitely gives that finished feel. Yeah. I'm gonna test that stuff, but yeah. Yeah, I need one help, dude. You can't help me. You're actually in my way, okay? Please, leave me alone. I love you. I installed that panel correctly this time. Last time I laid it on top of the uh, pose, like a pool, kind of, but I still gotta fix that one. But that guy's up there properly, so once we have that guy up and get the arm up, will be operational. I actually ran both of these this time. I'm gonna tighten them down. The reason why there's a bolt going through here because on the other side of the fence I went back after the fact and put bolts through here because all we did was crank them down on the clamps and eventually the clamps started moving and it started sliding and all it was doing is bending the pipe portion of this gate right here so there's a hole for there through there for a bolt to go through them so I put bolts in there and it held in place and doesn't move now so this go around put the bolts in now this thing will not move So now that this is done, next thing we're gonna do is mount the control box in the battery box. We mounted this right here for a uh, push 
to open and not a pull to open. So what that means is this right here, the arm will go out and it's gonna push the whole gate open versus the opposite way. If this entire arm was out, it'd be a pull to open. So go, this thing would suck in and pull it this way. The reason why we didn't go that route is because we get a lot of uh, we get snow here and we get a lot of freezing rain. So if that arm is completely extended out and I get a lot of freezing rain, that arm's not gonna wanna come in and the door's not gonna open. I'm gonna come out here and manually open it by taking this thing off and pushing it open. So we did it this way. So if it does get a lot of freezing rain, this thing just opens itself up by pushing. And then when I pull out of there, it's gonna close back on up. So we are in fact above freezing now, right? Yes. So we're good to go? Hopefully, yes. Okay. We've been waiting for the temperatures to get up high enough and above freezing for us to button up this project over here. We've got all the hardware that needs to get spray painted and we have the door that's built that needs to get stained so that we can get everything hung. And then that whole project is gonna be done. So we're gonna officially have two operational doors going all the way through the underside of the deck and everything can get closed up. Now I'm just hoping that it dries in time because uh, they're wet and it's cold. So I decided that I'm not going to use the sprayer to stain the door this time like I did last time. And that's basically because I've realized that with small projects like this, it actually doesn't save us any time. Because we've got the cleanup and we've got the setup. Yeah. And at that point, we might as well have just pulled out a brush for a small project like this and just knocked it out. The juice ain't worth the squeeze in this one. No. Get ready to start prepping the door for the hardware. I'm gonna lay it out real quick, start drilling everything, get everything bolted together, and then we'll throw her up. Problem is, they didn't give us any washers, but it should hold. So get a, I screw the rest of those in, but we should be fine. Yeah, it's level. It's good enough. That's it's good. exciting. It's fine to be done. The measurement was absolutely perfect. <laughs> okay? Give myself a little clearance on that side. Comes over this way. 
and we're good. So I'm gonna get the, I'm gonna get the handle put on. Why are the like the baby? What's that? Why is she having the baby? She having baby? I think so. Let's go. That little baby down there. I see it. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's so exciting. She's, she looks exhausted. Probably. Alright, so let's see what it is. He's a boy. Oh, it's a little ram yeah, he's, lamb. He, he's brand new, so let's leave, let's, let's leave them be. Here you he's go, Mama. Now. Take your baby back. It's a lot warmer today than it was yesterday, so she's going to be fine out here in the pasture. The big thing that we're going to be looking for is just making sure that the baby latches on and starts nursing properly, he's which, right yeah, he's working on it, so I'm sure with just enough time, what are you doing, guy, that he'll get there and be fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can always kind of tell when the baby's tail starts wiggling back and forth a whole bunch. That usually means that he's being satisfied and he has latched on. And a lot of times the mama you will lick right above the top of his tail to encourage him to nurse. So she looks like she's a really good mom. I expect that she's going to do just fine. What do you think, Leon? <laughs> he's trying to nurse. To find it. 